Welcome to Nature Source Care. My name is Dr. Funda Goldman. I'm a licensed naturopathic physician, and this talk was going to cover marma therapy, specifically the Ayurvedic energy points on the lower back. A note of caution before we get too far along the information presented here is for educational purposes only and should not be considered medical advice. For any symptoms that are severe or worsening, please contact a qualified healthcare professional. It's always important to determine the root cause of any disease and to develop a comprehensive treatment plan, of which marma can be an important part. Individual cases can vary in terms of treatments that are most effective. Um, solo therapies may not be appropriate or effective in all cases, so marma therapy by itself may not be sufficient. Um, also, especially since we're talking about the lower back, um, other therapies such as chiropractic or, or yoga or, or surgery um, may be appropriate, so keep that in mind. Just a bit about Brahma therapy generally. Uh, it comes from Ayurveda, which is traditional Indian medicine. Ayurveda is more than 5,000 years old. Um, I really appreciate Brahma therapy because it's non-invasive. Um, you can kind of think about it as, like acupressure, although acupuncture points are, there's some overlap, but there's also some differences as well, so these two symptoms are not exactly the same. Uh, marma therapy is an energy therapy. There are about 107 marma points on the body. And since this is an energy therapy, you kind of have to shift your mindset a bit. And, and start to think about people, states of disease and health as sort of energy or waves. And so um, by touching these points in different ways, stimulating these points in different ways, you allow those energies to rebalance themselves to create better harmony and health within somebody. The first uh, marma therapy video I did was marma points on the hand and I have more history about marma therapy there. Uh, if you want an example of how to work with Marma Therapy Points, I would check out my Marma Therapy Points on the Hand follow-along video. Um, it takes a few minutes. You can follow along and have your own experience of it and see what it's all about. The other thing related to this video is I also created Marma Therapy videos on the upper back, which is obviously related for the rest of the spine, or at least the upper part of the spine. I also um, have videos on the neck, both front and back. Um, and then the other videos that I've done already on Marma related to this, or most related to this, are um, I did three ab videos, the upper abs, middle abs, and lower abs. So there's some relationship there. And then if you're interested in this kind of content, I would check out my Marma Therapy, Ayurveda, or, and or body care playlist for more stuff like this. So let's look at the lower back anatomy because it, it won't always be easy to see on a, a human body <laughs> um, because there's muscle and, and, and subcutaneous fat and skin on top. But this is what we're looking for here. We're going to be covering four points on the lower back. The first one is at T12. What does that mean? Well, there's as you look at the spine here, if you look at the purple section, in the middle of the ribs. Those are the thoracic vertebrae, and there are 12 of them. So the one at the end, closest to your hips, that's that's what we call thoracic vertebrae 12 or T12, okay? So just on the side of T12 there is Rukka, which is gonna be the first point. And I'll get more into the details of this. I just wanna give you a layout of the general anatomy and where we're going with this, and then we'll get into the details. Okay, and then the second point here is Kukundara, and so that's going to be at L5. So L5 means lumbar vertebra 5. So if you look at the kind of, I can't tell if it's yellow or green. Well, I guess it's more yellow than green because the sacrum is green here. I guess the yellow part here, there's five vertebra there. Those are the lumbar vertebra, and there's five of them. So the one closest to um, the hips is where you're going to find Kukundara and there's one on either side. Then if you go a little bit lower to that, in the first foramen, or the first foramen is like a hole or opening, um, of the sacrum. The sacrum is uh, fused. There's several vertebrae there, they're fused. I kind of, I almost think of like a turtle shell or something because they don't move much from each other. Um, 
you know, they all kind of move together as a single fused piece. And then that's where you're going to find your third point kati, and there's going to be one on either side again bilaterally. And then the last point here is at the very end, the tip of the spine, the tip of the coccyx, and that's called trick, and there's just one there. Okay, and then you can also see, not just if you kind of look head on to somebody, somebody's spine, but if you look laterally, um, it's kind of nice. This uh, picture that I mocked up kind of shows you laterally, um, the sort of proportionally where these points are to each other. Okay, just so you have some lay of the land before we get into the details. Uh, the first point here is Rukka, which uh, translates to water filter in Sanskrit. The location of Rukka is about one angula, which is about a finger width, lateral to the lower border of the spinous process of T12. So again, that's the, uh, the last vertebra to basically um, connect with the rib cage. Yeah. And there's going to be one on either side, so it's times two here. Um, you can kind of see the picture here. The thumb um, is about where it's supposed to be. It might be a little bit lateral, but you kind of get the idea. Um, the energies associated with this point are the Vyana Vayu and the Apana Vayu. Um, I'm probably going to do more videos on this. this. These words may not mean much to you if you're not a deeper student of Ayurveda. But if you are a deeper student of Ayurveda, you'll know that, for example, Apana Vayu, Vayu means wind, so that's sort of like a wind energy in the body. That's uh, wind is associated with movement. Apana is the downward movement of wind. And so especially since we're working on the lower back, which is related to like the kidneys and bladder, so urination, you're gonna need downward movement for that. Um, it's also, these points are, uh, some of these points are related to the colon. Again, you're going to need downward movement to have a bowel movement. And for women and men, um, when there's, when you have your menses or when you ejaculate and that downward movement of fluids, that's also a panavayu. Okay. So just, just so you have some understanding or some indication of what these words are about. But again, it's not complete. I just have this here for, again, uh, folks who basically knows what these terms are, and then I'll um, com uh, complete some other videos down the line. In any case, indications for Vruka, um, the points here, all Marma points have local indications, so you can imagine locally what could, you know, be helped by these points, low back pain, sciatica, also edema or swelling of the lower extremities. Now again, I mentioned, you know, at the beginning here is that, you know, somebody has um, uh, you know, pretty severely um, disjointed spine or um, irregular spine or something like that, you know, the marma therapy may not be sufficient. It may be helpful, but it may not be sufficient. So somebody might need chiropractic training or traction or yoga um, to kind of open up the space. They might need surgery, you know. So there's other things. Again, the marma therapy can be supportive. Um, if it's more of a soft tissue thing, you probably are more likely to get even more um, out of the marma therapy. Okay, and obviously um, this point is very close to the kidney, so most kidney indications, like disease, that sort of thing, like improving glomerular uh, filtration of the kidneys, kidney pain, kidney colic, kidney stones, kidney infections, uh, the RUCA can be helpful here. It's also the adrenals sit on top of the kidneys, so the RUCA points can also be um, helpful for adrenal pain or adrenal insufficiency, um, that sort of thing. And again, we're close to the top of the bladder here, so bladder issues such as urethritis and UTIs, urinary tract infection, cystitis, or inflammation of the bladder can be helped. The other thing is that this point, or these two points um, bilaterally to the spine, can be helpful with emotions, and in this case, specifically fear. And there is actually some relationship because in uh, traditional Chinese medicine, for example, the kidneys are related um, emotionally. There's an emotional relationship with fear also in Chinese medicine. So looks like that's similar. So that's Bruka. The second point is called Kukundara. Uh, and again, it's bilaterally both sides of the spine. Kukundara s translates to spine or back support because this is basically the uh, um, 
top edge of the sacrum and the sacrum again is five fused vertebra so it's like a like a little um what do they call it? pillar that the rest of the spine kind of um, rotates from to some extent um so uh the location more specifically the location of kukandar is one angular or finger width lateral to the lower border of the spinous process of l5 lumbar vertebra five there's one on each side, so there's two of these guys. And the energy is same as uh, Ruka, Vyanavayu, and Apanavayu. Indications for this point, these points, again, local things, local pain, myofascial tightness, degenerative joint disease, herniated disc, lumbar radiculopathy, um, which means a pinched nerve. Again, you might need additional therapies, but um, you know the mama therapy can be supportive. Again, we're close to the kidney, so kidney issues, bladder issues like urethritis, enuresis, bedwetting, frequent urination. Um, most things in the urinary system are getting helped here. And we're also getting close to the colon, so things like either constipation or diarrhea, either way, um, depending on how you work with these points, can be helped with Kukundara. The third point here, so we're gonna go a little bit lower, so now we're actually on the sacrum. And we're looking for the first posterior sacral form, and the form means a hole or opening. So this is basically where uh, there's a little, even though they're fused, there's a little bit of opening between the five fused vertebrae of the sacrum. Yeah. So again, there's two, one on each side, bilateral into the spine. The energies here, a panavayu again, so not too surprising. And then this time we're also looking at Ranjika Pitta and Kledika Kapha. So those three energies are supported and balanced by this point. Again, indications here, local issues, pain, congestion, inflammation. Also the sacroiliac joint is here. So if there's any issues there, you can work on this point. Um, kidneys again, bladder again, colon again. Also, now that we're getting lower into the pelvis or the hips, um, also reproductive functions. So. Uh, relate, reproductive functions related to the ovaries, fallopian tubes for women, the testes for men, um, and libido for both uh, sexes, and also impotence can be helped with this point. So again, this point here, kati, translates to hip or waist in Sanskrit. Okay, so again, we're just moving down the spine a little bit here. And then the first, fourth point is called trik, which translates to triangle in Sanskrit. The location here is at the very end of the spine, at the tip of the coccyx. There's only one, so it's not bilateral, it's just one at the very end of the coccyx. The energy supported by this point are the apanavayu again, because again, you know, this part of the body, it's all about elimination of different fluids. Ranjika pitta, klitika kapha are also balanced here. Now the thing is, you know, this is at the very end of the spine, you're going to be very close to the rectum. This is not a point you should really work with on anybody except yourself. Um, you might um, describe it to people um, or maybe have a diagram or something like this or use a photo like this, um, but really it's, it's going to be too sensitive and private um, you know, for other people. So in any case, again, we're looking at local functions. So pain, congestion, inflammation, low back pain, lumbar radiculopathy, again, pinched nerve, uh, sacroiliac joint dysfunction, sciatica, pelvic issues with the pelvic floor because we're getting pretty deep here um, in the spine. Pain in the coccyx itself can be helped by this point. Bladder again, retention, frequency, other issues with the bladder. Also again, reproductive, cervical, prostate dysfunction, impotence, libido, so somewhat similar to the last uh, point. Kati, and again, we're very close to the rectum here, so issues with the rectum like, such as pain, fissures, and hemorrhoids can be helped at this point. And this point is actually um, has some spiritual or mystical functions. Um, this is thought to be the area where the kundalini energy resides. Sort of, they talk about it often like a coiled up snake. It's basically a potential, um, deep potential spiritual energy. And if you learn to work with it and actually learn to work with it to lift it up through the chakras all the way to the crown chakra, then that can really. Um, support and accelerate spiritual um, development. Um, in any case, if that's of interest to you, maybe you're a yoga student or a meditation student, um, you can work with that, this point in that, for that purpose. 
Um, also, the muladhara or root chakra is located in this area. So especially if you're looking for um, working with those sorts of issues, so things such as being grounded, um, being connected to family, being connected to tribe, community, that sort of thing, you know, feeling connected to humanity in general, generally feeling connected to the earth, um, you know, feeling, feeling, having a sense of home, um, those sorts of issues can be helped um, by balancing the Muladhara chakra. The other thing is be conscious with this point. It's a very sensitive point. There's a lot of nerve endings there, and it's actually pretty fragile. So if you put too much pressure, you can actually break off the coccyx, and that's generally not an easy thing to fix. <laughs> Um, even though it's a small little vestigial, uh, vestigial tail, um, because you're always moving your hips or sitting or, or what have you, um, if you break that off, it's not easy to fix and it's very painful. So, uh, gentle, gentle as it goes here. So let's summarize, uh, the four points. Again, all four points, uh, Bruka, Kukandara, Kati, and Trik all have local effects. So keep that in mind. Points one, two, and three. Um, help the kidneys, uh, point one, the highest point here on the spine helps the adrenals. All of these points help the bladder. Um, points two and three help the colon. Four, the deepest, lowest point here helps the rectum specifically. Points three and four help the reproductive system. Uh, the top point here helps with emotion, specifically fear. And then again, the lowest point here helps with kundalini energy the rising mat, and the muladhara root chakra functions. So there you have it for points on the lower spine and lower back. So how do you work with these? So again, you can check out my video. I mentioned the mama hands follow along video just to kind of see and experience on your hands, like how you can gently work with these points. Again, the you don't need to push hard. You don't need to really, you know, deeply manipulate these points. Again, it's all about energy. So also the kind of energy you bring to these points is important. But if you want one example, and there are different ways of doing it, but if you want one example, I would check out that video. The other thing is you can use warm and cool packs. So if you do know um, what we call the brakruti prakruti of somebody, so somebody's constitution or the energies somebody is potentially in excess of or depletion of. Um, you can potentially use warm and cool packs, but if you don't know this, don't don't even try it. You know, it's just if you you do actually know these things. Um, but if if it happens to be a vata or kapha type issue, so a wind or earth excess type issue, you can use warm to balance those because vata and kapha are both cool in nature so you need you can use the warm to balance um, vata and kapha if it's like just full-on inflammation or an infection or something like that that would be considered pitta or too much fire and you can use a cool pack um, you don't want to use ice directly on the skin you always want some kind of barrier like a wet cloth between the ice and your skin so you don't get frostbite so keep that in mind Another way to work with these points or marma points in general is you can do apyanga or warm oil massage. If you want more information about natural oils and using them on the skin, um, I did actually create a natural oils video. You can check that out. You can also use meditation and breathing. You don't actually have to use your hands and kind of a physical manipulation, um, you know, by breathing deeply into the body and meditating on these points you will be bringing your prana or life force energy to these points and that alone will also help um, balance the energy at these points so you might consider that then you can use yoga there's a whole bunch of different poses you can do you can imagine most of the poses that involve the lower spine and hips will be helpful so things like cat cow up dog, down dog, dolphin, those three, you know, because again, as you're stretching your hips back um, and forward and backward, you're going to be stretching these points. Sufi grind is another one where you're basically sitting on on the floor and then you're just rotating your, your belly. You're kind of bringing your belly button forward and then sending it back. So you're kind of, it's sort of like a spoon in a bowl um, and the bowl being your pelvis. Um, that can be helpful for these points. And usually people feel pretty good when they do that. 
Uh, it's a gentle one, especially if you're not deep into yoga or you have um, some limitations. Again, you should clear all this with your doctor um, and you shouldn't do any of these things if you've recently had surgery or you have some pretty serious spine issues. But if yoga is okay for you, then you might consider some of these as a way to work with your points. Side bending, so you can see in the photo here, uh, this was an attempt to hold on to Rukka, <laughs> Rukka and then just kind of like sway side to side. When I've given this, um, you know, sort of modified pose to people, they're usually like, the first thing they say is, wow, that feels really good. Um, again, it depends on what's going on, but you know, there's usually a tightness in the lower back um, for most people, because we're sitting down way too long and too much these days. So, um, you know, you could do something like that. Some part of side bending will basically um, stretch these points, stimulate them a bit. Child's pose, something pretty simple, basic like that, as far as yoga um, uh, practice, so balasana can be helpful. Squatting, actually, too, because again, as you're squatting, you're going to be. Um, drawing tension on the lower back and you know close to even trick you know lower colon lower rectum pelvic floor area all that's going to be stimulated happy baby if you prefer that kind of pose you can get on your back and draw your knees to the side hold on to your feet like a baby and kind of roll back and forth and kind of roll over the lower spine that can be helpful you can also do plow pose where you're on your back and then you lift your legs and kind of send them over your head. Um, that's called halasana, plow pose. Basically, you're really stretching the lower back there. Um, you can also sit on one heel. Um, specific. This is specifically for the trick point because, again, if you're sitting and then you have a heel underneath your uh, perineum basically towards the back and your you know basically your heel is almost touching your rectum and also the coccyx then you'd be stimulating the trick point also um, triangle pose or trikonasana um, that's another way to stretch or stimulate the trick point um, trick marma point and lotus pose also padmasana, padmasana. Um, you know, as you're sitting in lotus pose, that will stretch the uh, trick marma point and stimulate it that way. So there's a whole bunch of ways to work with these points. The other thing you can do, which is probably the sort of most passive and probably peaceful <laughs> um, and, and possibly gentle, is if you just um, lie down on your back and slide like a thin pillow. It doesn't have to be high or tall or hard. A thin pillow or maybe even a folded up kind of towel just just to lift your hips a little bit it doesn't have to be a, a huge back bend but even a slight back bend will help stimulate these points all right so whole long list of ways to work with these points here so there you go four more points to add to our growing repertoire of marma points um, and I think we're almost done We've got one more video that covers some points on the on the torso, but we're almost done with the torso. And then we'll move on to the legs, knees, you know, feet, that sort of thing. So a few more videos and then we should be done with the whole set. So that's kind of cool. In any case, I hope you're you keep working with these points and learning more about them. Every time you get a chance, you know, you might try some of these points and see how they work for you. Um, also, I have another YouTube channel. I do Vedic Astrology. So my other YouTube channel is called Heartlight Vedic Astrology if you're interested in like monthly planetary transit reports and things like that. All right, so everybody take care. Thank you for your time. Um, and I wish you well. Namaste.